I've been making videos for a while and I've been procrastinating putting out a chest video mostly because I know a lot of guys run to the gym and that's all they want to do is chest so I put it off until after I did pretty much everything else we done did shoulders, we done did back, we done did biceps um, arms, whatever it is and now I'm finally getting the chest because I wanted to reinforce all the other stuff keep dudes from going in the gym doing chest three, four days a week and not addressing anything else ending up horribly imbalanced and still not doing the chest right to begin with or just doing arms and chest and not doing anything to address this center section no cardio, no eating right, nothing like that but anyway, procrastination is over and we're gonna do a chest video workout today. Ladies, don't tune out because this is for you too. If uh, you're one of the ladies and you had that problem with that little bit of that little bit of fat that like to peek out on the side of your bra, your sports bra, your regular bra, whatever it is, that annoying little piece of fat that likes to creep out, the way you get rid of that is you work your shoulders and your chest, both of which are work by doing uh, chest chest workouts. So you want to work uh, your shoulders, uh, your front delts, and you want to work your chest so you can get it lean. Now all this makes no difference whatsoever if your body fat is not low enough. So you still got to do all the other stuff. You got to eat right. You got to maintain a uh, good cardio base so that you can burn fat effectively. So you got to have good cardio so you can burn the fat. You got to be eating right but you gotta also do the exercises to build the muscle. And um, of course genetics come into play when it comes to chest, but you gotta do what you can do, what you can do and make the most out of it. <clears throat> now, there's a difference between developing your chest and getting leaner and getting big and bulkier. And I'll talk more about that in the voiceover while I'm doing the, while I'm doing the workout. But real quick, I wanted, to, I wanted to do a quick tutorial on what you need to do when you're doing bench press, okay? So I'm gonna bring the camera over to the bar here. All right, so as you can see on the bar, this is the center part of the bar, all right? I see a lot of people get on the bench and then they slide as far up the bench as they can, thinking their head needs to be at the top of the bench. No, your eyes need to be directly beneath the bar, your eyes. So you're looking straight up at the bar. Because if you slide too far in, then your rack that catches the bar is going to be too far down. So you're gonna to have to hold the bar too far down your stomach to press it, which is gonna put you in a bad situation for your shoulders, okay? So your eyes are directly beneath the bar, all right? The easiest way to set your hands is to, most bars have, almost all bars have this smooth transition and rough transition with the uh, rough also in the middle. The easiest way is to take your thumb and place it uh, on the transition edge here. You do it with your right hand, you do it with your left hand, and that will give you a good baseline for where to put your hands. Now, if you want to emphasize chest more, you can move them out slightly from there, but you have to see what works um, for your particular uh, frame and size. If you got short arms, you got long arms, it may be slightly different, all right? That's, those two things are very important, all right? So next, I'm gonna do this with no weight on the bar so that you can see my elbows. When you rack the bar, especially if you want a good, a good, uh, a good rack, you can just, just bring it back and then bring it down. If you're bench pressing by yourself, which I do quite a bit, uh, but you need to have a spotter if you can't control the weight. Just slide it up and then bring it down. All right. Now, when you come down to your chest, you want to come down with your elbows about even with your nipples at 45 degrees. And then go back up, all right? Down where the bar should touch right in line with your nipples and up, all right? So your elbows are down here. Do not want your elbows way up here, all right? This is very common to ladies. 
do not want your elbows way up here. Number one, you're gonna lose strength because the further your elbows get out from your uh, from your center, and your core, the weaker you're gonna get. Okay, so you want them here, down and up. Nine, uh, about 45 degrees in the armpits, and uh, you want to touch right in the center of your diaphragm, right, uh, right in your center of your rib cage, where your rib cage splits to go off and uh, and open up for your lungs. Okay, so down and up. Whether you touch or not is up to you. Now you can touch, you pause, you press, or you cannot touch and go up, all right? Different strokes for different folks. I'll leave that up to y'all. But at the end of the day, you just gotta get it in. So anyway, we're gonna get this workout started. Let's get it in. All right, you guys, with this being the first chest workout that I'm posting, I wanted to start off with pause reps. I really like pause reps because they keep you from getting sloppy and ego lifting, all right? Bouncing the weight all over the place. Uh, also, not doing full repetitions. You know, things that are going to be detrimental to you actually developing your chest muscles. And, you know, it's very annoying to watch guys go put way too much weight on the bar and do quarter reps that don't even go past where the rack is when you know your arms have to be longer than the rack because you took it off the rack to begin with. Uh, but anyways, this is a 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4 routine. I'm starting off with 15 reps at 135 pounds, pause reps. The great part about this is you don't have to do a bunch of warming up. Traditional chest work, bench workouts can take all day because you spend all your time warming up and then you do your working sets then you might do a drop set or a burnout set or something at the end that could take an hour by itself i like this one because the warm-up is basically included in the in the workout so usually i will go 135 and then 185 that's what i'm doing here anyway i'm just doing pause reps and a decreasing number while i increase the weight so here i'm at 12 reps at 185 pounds notice I'm not placing the weight on my chest and letting it rest I'm still holding it all right and I am used to a few things all right notice that my thumbs are wrapped around the top of the bar not completely around the bar where the bar is, where my grip will be closed around the bar I've been benching for a long time I have not dropped the, I might have dropped the weight on my chest one time ever and uh, I think I was just young at the time uh, but I do advise anyone else to use a closed grip all right here I'm going 10 reps at 205 another thing I'm used to benching without a spot I've done it for years and if you are not accustomed to doing this you need to have a spot if you don't know when you're gonna run out of gas I know exactly when I'm gonna run out of gas and when I can get that last rep and when I can't Another thing is that I leave the clamps off the bar because if I do get hung, all I have to do is tilt the bar. One side will slide off and then the other side will slide off. There's no, I've seen guys on video take 275, 300 pounds and drag it across their chest and across their crotch and knees and then go that way. There's no way I'm about to drag that much weight across my groin. Not going, not, not going to happen ever. But um, anyway... We're on to 225 pounds for eight reps, and I'm taking about two minutes to rest in between these sets. Uh, you can do something in between. You can do some cardio. You can do some back, uh, you know, an antagonist muscle that doesn't, that's not going to affect what you're doing. Uh, but I just decided to take two minutes. I think I was walking on the treadmill here because I wanted to get some extra steps in for the day. Uh, but I did do cardio after this workout. Um, and I'll mention in the work in the cardio workout for this portion of run fast lift heavy why you want to do the cardio after you do the lifting. Okay, now the going is gonna really start getting tough. Uh, the 225 was tough, uh, but now we're doing 245 here for six reps now. Remember, as the weight gets heavier, 
your form is going to start to break down so you got to really focus on keeping your form and maintaining good level bar and keeping those elbows as mentioned in the tutorial at 45 degrees pushing up through the base of your hand that's part of the reason for keeping an open grip oh yeah that last one didn't really want to get up there so this last set um, I jumped up to 275 pounds that's way too big a jump I just figured I would try it fresh I could easily do this but you know or with a traditional warm-up but after doing all these pause reps it really does put it it really does tax your chest um, so I probably should have done like 265 uh, so I was shooting for four reps here and needs to say that just wasn't gonna happen um, I got the first rep pretty easy so I felt pretty good about it and I felt it when I was trying to pick it up off the rack I was like man this feels like 315 right now so um, had to had to lift it again got it down the first rep pause got it up that one felt pretty strong that second one er, 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 er. had to do a little bridging once you have to do a bridge then you basically are taking your chest out of the workout so it's time to rack it up um, so that was the end of the bench pressing all right guys so our finisher so to speak now keep in mind there is chest involved with the cardio so that is why this is done before um, that's why this particular strength workout is done before the uh, cardio so do not do your cardio first this time or you will be hating life when you get to those pause reps especially if you get to a weight where you're really challenging or getting close to you know 60 70 percent of your maximum repetition uh, so what we're doing here is a moderate weight for incline press so the incline press weight should not challenge you that much but once you switch over to the incline flies it's really going to start to challenge you. You want to open that chest up and then squeeze it. This is not like the flat bench where you want to keep your back flat on the bench. This is one where you really want to open that chest up. And you're going to do higher rep range here. So you do 10 incline press and 8 incline flies. So that you can get some fatigue. So that you get some muscle endurance. And so you can burn, those, burn some fat on that, on that crevice in the chest and that's exactly where you should feel these incline flies is right in that chest crevice that chest shoulder crevice right by your armpit right in front of your armpit there and you can see those muscles firing right there those are the ones that you really want to target you're going to hit them from two different angles you're going to hit them with the incline press you're going to hit the top portion of it with the incline press and when you open those hands up you're going to hit that entire down to your nipple portion of the chest and that's the area that tends to carry the most amount of fat so that's the area that you really want to develop and you know ladies don't try to go you don't worry about getting man boobs and all that stuff you're really gonna have to lift a lot of weight to start getting man boobs so uh, you can stick to higher repetitions so you can do like 15 and 10 or something like that but you're not going to be able to do enough weight initially to to develop too much of a manly looking chest so this is my third set here make sure your form is proper now when you're doing incline press you want to come down to the arms are perpendicular to the floor and you want to press all the way up until the weights touch you want to touch the weights at the top so you really make sure that you're squeezing the chest and getting the entirety of the range of motion. Now, when you switch to the flies, you want to make sure that you keep your hands are going to be slightly wider than when you're pressing because you're keeping them open. So your elbow, your forearm should be at about 45 degrees. You're still coming down to parallel with your tricep, but your forearm should be about 45 degree angle upwards and outwards. And then when you come up, it's okay to squeeze those elbows straight so you can get a really good contraction with the chest muscle. So this will pretty much wrap up the strength portion of the run fast and lift heavy 
chest day. The cardio, as I mentioned, does have some push-ups involved. And push-ups are a great finisher for any chest day. So do not do the cardio first. All right, because it's really going to take away from your bench press, especially if you're doing it. If you're even going to try to do it without a spot, you better not do all those push-ups first because there's a lot of push-ups going on in the cardio. So I hope you guys enjoyed this workout, man. Uh, give it a try. If you don't have a barbell, you can use dumbbells for the entire thing. That's fine, too. Just go up and wait and down in reps, and uh, you can still develop good chest muscles. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys over at the cardio.